everyone, Justin here. Now, I've started planting myself a garden recently, and I thought that some flowers would really spruce things up. So, I planted some daisies the other day, but then I noticed some of these bushes that the daisies were growing on seemed a little different. Now, we've all practiced thinking like a scientist and using objective observations, so I didn't chalk it up to my opinion that some of these bushes seemed a little odd. I decided to gather some evidence by measuring the bushes, and lo and behold, some of these plants are taller than others. Now, this observation led me to start asking some questions. Do taller plants lead to bigger flowers? Does the size of the bush lead to a change in color or shape of the flowers? What would happen if I started watering the plants more? Would they grow faster? Now, we all know that scientific thinking leads us to asking a ton of questions like these, but how do scientists actually answer these questions? Well, we're gonna find out today. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to summarize some of the ways that scientists gather information and answer questions. And you'll be able to compare and contrast observations and experiments. Let's get into it. We know that scientific thinking helps scientists ask and answer questions, but how does answering these questions really work? I mean, I could say, hey, here's my garden, go in and use your five senses to answer all of my questions about daisies, but you'd probably be a little unsure of where to start or where to find the daisies even. There are plenty of different methods that scientists use to answer their questions. We call these scientific investigations, or a plan for finding an answer to a question using scientific thinking. Of course, not all questions can be answered in the same way, so we're going to be talking about two different types of scientific investigations, observational investigations and experimental investigations. We know that observations are when we use our five senses to study something closely. An observational investigation is a scientific investigation that only uses observations to answer a question. We can describe our observations using words or numbers, and both of these can help us answer different types of questions. Let's think back to my daisies. We could describe our observations of them with words, like saying they're white and yellow, they're round, or their petals are smooth. These observations can help us answer one of the questions I had. I was wondering if the size of the plant changes the shape or color of the flowers. We can observe the plants and find out that, nope, no matter the size of the plant, the flowers are the same shape and same color. We can also describe observations with numbers. We might observe that these larger flowers at the top are about three inches wide, but the ones on the bottom are only about one inch wide. These observations can help us answer another question I had. I was wondering if the bigger plants were also growing bigger flowers. We can compare the measurements I took to see that, yep, the taller plants were growing bigger flowers as well. Observational investigations are a great way to answer our questions. But what about that other question I had? Would giving the plants more water help them to grow faster? Do you think we could use an observational investigation to answer that question? Pause the video now and answer that in your guided notes. Some questions just can't be answered by observation alone. That's why we have our second type of scientific investigation, experiments. An experimental investigation is a scientific investigation that uses an experiment to answer a question. 
These experiments are when scientists change something to see what will happen. Experiments usually have two major parts to them, the variables and the controls. The variables are the things that vary or change during the experiment. These can change because they're what the scientist is trying to test in the experiment, or they could change because of the other variables. The variable that the scientist changes is called the independent variable. If I took one of my daisy plants into a dark room and left one out in the sunlight, then the amount of light that they're getting would be the independent variable because I changed it in my experiment. The dependent variable is the change that depends on the independent variable or the part changed by the scientist. Chances are the daisy in the dark room will stop growing. So its growth depends on the amount of light. But what if I forgot to water the plant in the dark room? If it stopped growing, it might be because it was thirsty, not because it was dark. That's where the other parts of experiments come in. The control. A control is something that the scientist keeps the exact same throughout the entire experiment. For example, in this experiment, I would want a control to be the amount of water I'm giving to each plant. I would also want to make sure that I'm using the same kind of plant, that they're all in the same kind of pot, and in the same kind of soil. As you can see, one experiment can have lots of different controls. These are an important part of any experiment because they help the scientists make sure that they're only testing one thing at a time. Now that we know how an experiment works, we can put all of this together to come up with an experiment to answer my questions about my plants. Would giving a plant more water help it grow faster? Pause the video here and write out your own idea for an experiment to answer this question in your guided notes. Let's think about variables first. Remember, the independent variable is what the scientist changes. So the independent variable here would be the amount of water given to each plant. The dependent variable is what happens because of that change. So in this case, it would be how fast the plants grow. Our controls, or the things that should stay the same, might be the types of plants we're experimenting on and the amount of sunlight each plant gets. In this experiment, we could give some plants something like one cup of water each day and give other plants two cups of water a day and then wait and see what happens. To answer our question, we would need to observe the plants to see if the amount of water changed how fast they grew. Now, you might be thinking, hold on a minute. I thought this was an experimental investigation, not an observational one. That's the thing. Experimental investigations always include observational ones. After all, objective observations are how we gather evidence. So you can have an observation without an experiment, but you can't have an experiment without an observation. And speaking of experiments and observations, I gotta go start watering those daisies. Before I do that, let's review everything we've learned today. We now know that Scientists use both observational investigations and experimental investigations to help them answer questions. Each type of investigation helps scientists to answer different types of questions. And objective observations are an important part of both types of investigations. In order to practice your scientific thinking and your designing of your own experiments, be sure to check out the practice questions and activities that go with this lesson. That's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining us. And as always, remember, science is all around us. See you next time. Hey, hey.